Studio Charlie is back and we're diving right into the design process. Today I'm going to be using Envato Elements to create a 3D t-shirt design essentially. It could be for a poster, a t-shirt, basically whatever you want, but um, I'm going to be using these 3D renders on Envato to kind of just compose something and um, we're even going to use Adobe Illustrator to create sort of like a frame for this design that I have in my mind. On Envato Elements, once you sign up, you'll see this dashboard. And by the way, if you guys want to sign up to Envato Elements, you could get 50% off an annual subscription by using my affiliate link in the description below. And when you sign up, it of course helps me out. I get a little bit of a profit from that, which helps the channel grow. So it's a kind of a win-win for both of us. Anyway, if you do sign up, you're going to see this dashboard. On the very top, you're going to see a search bar. And what I like to do is go all the way to the bottom where 3D is and then I'm just going to type in robot because I already kind of know what asset I want to use because I've used this one before and I love it so much. So it's going to be this one right here. If you scroll down, like how many, how many rows is this? One, two, seven, eight, nine. It's nine rows down. You're going to see this robot. It's titled robot L E D I zero zero one. And you can use the exact same one. And then I'm just going to click this big red button that says view three, six render by clicking that we can rotate this object in 3d space and pick an angle that we really like. I like this angle right here, maybe even going down a little bit more. And uh, the only thing I really need right now is a, a nice font. So let's go ahead and go to this little drop down menu again and then click on fonts. And I'm just going to type in futuristic. I really like this font called Air Wars. So we're going to go ahead and download that one. And then I might try to find one more font just uh, so we have options here. I like this uh, Engimatic font as well. So I'm going to download that one. I like this anti-design one too. So we're going to download that one. See, now I'm going down the rabbit hole that we always talk about here. Like every single time I look at fonts, I can't just download one. I have to keep going. And that's my issue with them because they're so fun. All right. So we have zip files for everything. I'm going to open up my font book since I'm on a Mac. There's something called font books and I can just drag this into my font library there and I could do the same thing for all the downloads. So let's take the other ones as well. While we're at it, we can also unzip these robots and use them as well. So we can open these up in Photoshop just so we have them kind of ready to go. I'm going to jump into Adobe Illustrator real fast and let's make some sort of frame that we can use for our design. So I'm going to do eight and a half by 11. That's fine. And uh, let's start messing with some shapes here. So. The robot, I want to be on the left hand side. So maybe we'll have a box on the left hand side and then a smaller box on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and try. What I want to do is duplicate this and then fill this with black. Let's try this. Send that to the back. And then when I do this, like, and then when I do that little folder right here, it's going to have that black border. And I think that looks pretty cool. So we're going to try to keep that. See what happens because sometimes you just have to try things and hope for the best. I mean, it doesn't always work out, but you know, you never know until you try. So I'm just going to delete that box on the right because I didn't like it. To me, this is already feeling a little bit more balanced. So what I want to do is select everything and just add a slightly thicker stroke to this. So it's more dominant. See, something like this looks pretty cool. And I like how thick the lines are. Let's go ahead and copy it. So I'm going to select it and just do command C. Now I can just press command N on my keyboard and let's go ahead and go to inches. And I think I want to make this like 15 by or maybe 16 by 18 or 14 by 18, let's say. So 14 by 18, uh, 300 resolution, of course. And we want to make sure our uh, color mode is set to working RGB, sRGB. Background contents, we want this to be on a white T. So I'm going to keep that white and then press OK. And I can just do Shift Command V and then uh, paste this as a smart object. I'm just going to take one of these robots. I'm going to figure out this angle first. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to get rid of the shadows, get rid of the background. And I'm just going to do Command A and then shift command C to copy that and shift command V to paste it. And then we could just resize it like this. So now we have a big ass robot and uh, we just need some text. And then maybe we can add some like cool effects, like some texture stippling effect to the robot. But uh, the one thing I am noticing right now is that that right hand, or I guess it would be the left hand is kind of getting lost with the uh, black background. And that's completely normal. We can fix that. And I'm going to show you how in a second. But uh, so yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to make a selection around the robot. And then what I want to do is go up to filter. We're going to go to not filter, select, modify, expand. I'm going to expand this by like 15. So we have like a nice little border. If I zoom in, you can see what I'm doing. And then from here, I could do shift and backspace and just fill this with white like that. And that looks really cool. And then we can even add an outer glow. Now we want the opacity to be all the way up. 
and we want to make sure the size is uh, obviously bigger. We just want to add a subtle glow, nothing too crazy. This looks pretty cool and I'm not going to keep it like that. We're going to add some sort of stippling effect to it. So it is going to change. I just realized I was covering my layers palette up. So let me go over that again. So I have the robot on top and then I have a copy of that robot on the, at the bottom with a white color fill basically. And then I have an outer glow. That's pretty much all uh, I've done so far. And then I have that border that we made in uh, Adobe Illustrator. So that's where we're at and uh, we're gonna start adding effects slowly But I want to start playing with some colors now and see if we can get this looking pretty cool So what I want to do is just take my magic wand and delete that white box real quick And we have something that looks like this. that's transparent We can even just like instead of deleting it We could literally just cut it and then paste it back in place and then keep a copy of it in case we need it Because you never know we might want to change the color later on and then from here we can just literally change the color of this box to any color we want so we can go like that navy color for example and just kind of play with these different colors like i really like color picking from my elements that i'm using so maybe we can use one of these black colors some sort of black gunmetal color and then from here we could just you know type out something so let's go ahead and try let's try air wars real quick this font works in my opinion i like it i'm working on a brand right now and i'm not going to say too much about it but it's called 91 rebels if you follow me on instagram you've probably seen a little bit of me uh kind of teasing it in a way. Let's go ahead and do 91 Rebels. And then for this font color, I'm just gonna add a color overlay really quick. Uh, I know that I'm doing this kind of messy. From here, I just wanna double click on the thumbnail and let's change the foreground color to that yellow color and start introducing it a little bit and see what that looks like. So maybe we'll do something like that. And then on the top, we can add um, anti-norm, which is one of the quotes I'm gonna be using. Let's go ahead and do that secondary font, which is anti-design. I don't like that right there. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep 91 right there. On the top left, maybe I'll do anti-norm and then we can left align this and maybe put this right here. In the middle of me looking for yet another font, I found another one that I liked and it's called Neo Cyber. And I just thought it looked cool. So I'm gonna look at it real quick. I think it needs like one more like element. So I'm gonna take like a circle and illustrator and do some cutouts with it. I'm kind of all over the place right now. I know I just, I'm a little rusty, so I'm trying my best. But uh, yeah, you know, that's it's fun either way. You gotta try things to see what you like and what you don't like. All right, I'm gonna knock out this using the uh, Shape Builder tool. Let's copy these. This might actually be cool on the left-hand side now that I look at it. Maybe in that corner and then we can send that behind. I have some weird shit going on. I'm gonna just go ahead and skew this 91 and eat something. So let's skew it and see if we can salvage this. This looks all right. I'm not like in love with it, but I'm also not mad at it. So we'll be all right. I, I, I might just like kind of go with the flow. Maybe we keep it, you know? Maybe it's like one of those like happy mistakes that we didn't mean to make, but ended up actually working. See, I don't know. That looks kind of cool. Let's take a duplicate copy of this robot and let's go filter, uh, blur, motion blur and maybe add a blur going down. So maybe this can be a part of the stipple effect that we add. Um, bottom left needs work. I don't like the text on the bottom left, so we need to figure out where that needs to sit. See, sometimes I like to warp my text on purpose. You go from like a default font to something that's a lot more like organic and it just feels you know, new. I might end up doing the same thing to 91 Rebels, just kind of warping it a little bit. And then let's take one that's like a stroke. I have a bunch of these globes that I want to try out too, because I feel like that might help a little bit. But maybe we could put one on this bottom left hand side. I'm going to try something. I'm going to I'm going to cut this left side off, repaste that in place, and then let's do a different color. So on the outside, I'll probably do that that blue color. So it'll kind of be the inverse of everything. This is looking pretty good so far. I don't mind it. Maybe I could just add some circles to the right side instead. We'll change the fill to zero, and then maybe I could just add a stroke with that color palette that we're using, and that might even look cool. That might do the job. And sometimes this is literally all you need to do. Just go to a camera raw filter and uh, adjust this robot a little bit to bring out some details. And I'm just taking a step back a little bit, working on the robot a little bit more. And um, yeah, I think this is gonna do it some good. We can saturate this robot a little bit more, uh, add some sharpening, which is always gonna help it, and then even calibrate it a little bit to change the color dynamic. We will have to change the color of everything now because it's a different saturation level. So I'm gonna copy this color code and apply it to everything. I can add a color overlay. One thing I can do is maybe add like a little arrow, something like that, and this can be a lot smaller too. And then this triangle can be a yellow color instead. And then the circle at the bottom also needs to be that yellow color. I'm gonna go to camera raw again and get rid of the aqua color. I don't like it. It needs to get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's not invited to the party. 
So let's go to the hue and go to aquas and you can see that I'm affecting that aqua color now. And I think what I wanna do is go to saturation and just literally get rid of it all the way. And then maybe even take the hue of it and go to the right with it. Let's check the actual color of it now. I think it's like more of a blue. Now let's go ahead and take everything, go copy merge and then paste that on its own layer. And then I wanna press D on my keyboard to make my foreground black and my background white. And then from here we can go up to filter, go to filter gallery and then we could just work some magic. I wanna add this like cool stipple effect to everything. This is looking so sick already. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm happy with this. I might just end up doing a custom color palette here and uh, try to rework this. So let's do two points. I'll do one yellow. We'll kind of customize the colors here. We could do diamond. Let's go linear though. I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking, but the one thing I do wanna try is I'm gonna try to mask out this uh, 91 real quick and like add some of that color in there as well. Cause I think it would look cool um, and then after that, I think we're done. Honestly, I don't, I don't see myself wanting to like overwork this design any further. Just really roughly selecting around this, right? Like I don't want to spend too much time with it. Really only need the bottom. And then from here I can select the inside cause we don't really need that to be affected. Delete that out and then delete this part out as well. Till and orange is like kind of a classic color combo. So I'm like, do I want this to be more of like a teal and orange color combo. That's sick. <laughs> That's actually really cool. I like the red instead. Let's let's go with this. Especially with like 4th of July coming around the corner, like this actually kind of works for 4th of July. This looks super cool, but the one thing I want to add to it is a gradient around these honeycombs because I feel like it's kind of missing something right there. But that's like the only thing I would honestly change about it. That looks cool. And then we'll do it for this too. Just a little touch of that red color in these little areas would honestly go a long way. Try one of these textures out. This is not my texture pack, but if you guys wanna download my textures, you can do that in the link in the description below. It's just on my website. I have a bunch of different Photoshop and Illustrator elements that are really helpful and it saves you a lot of time. So if you guys wanna pick those up, definitely do that. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and resize this now and see what this looks like on the shirt. That's how I would use 3D uh, renders from Envato Elements to make a t-shirt design. If you guys want to sign up to Envato, I have a 50% off annual subscription link in the description below. We just took some 3D renders from Envato Elements and made a t-shirt design with them and also found some fonts. Really easy process, guys. It's a lot of trial and error, but it, with practice and patience, you guys can do the same thing. Don't forget, guys, you guys can always keep learning by clicking the next video right here but uh that's it for me i'll catch you guys in the very next video all right I came from the mud,